straight to the first speaker. And our first speaker for today will be Dr. Alisa White from USA. Dr. Alisa White from USA. Thank you and good morning from the sunny state of Arizona. It is an honor to be here in person with my dear friend and sister, Queen Elizabeth Lee Lucas, and this wonderful initiative to have us come together to talk about relationship matters. Man, I am telling you, I want to wish you a happy early birthday, <laughs> trailblazing queen and friend and mentor to so many of us. She brings us together so well throughout the years and the work is definitely speaking for itself because we continue to show up, learn, grow, be motivated and inspired and reminded that yes, we can together. And so that's just so beautiful. You know, I have a question for us this morning. Well, forgive me. I know it's evening for some of you, but it's still quite early here. Um, usually I'm in the bed just cozying up in the cold. But the question I have for us, what is the most important relationship in your life? I, I want to I see if someone can help me. I'm, I'm going to pick on a couple people that have their cameras on. I'm going to ask my dear friend, Ambassador Manat, because she is, I mean, that's the darling. I met her a few months ago and she's just a darling. Ambassador, what do you think is the most important relationship in your life? Or what would you say? Uh, Ma'am, uh, I feel that family is most important, but now as I'm growing up, I feel that friends are also equally important. I like that answer. We can go with that. And I see, um, I think it's a sister queen, Bosa. What do you think is the most important? What would you say is the most important relationship in your life? I think I definitely agree with what my young lady said. But for me, I said relationship with God, because just that set the standard for me to have a good relationship with others. Okay, I like it. I like it. And I see um, Soraya has her hands up. Soraya, what would you say? Very good evening to all of you. This is Professor Dr. Suraya Banu from India. I think uh, when trust and communication uh, exist, uh, this will be more important relationship when we trust anybody and we communicate freely with him or her. Thank wow. you. Man. Wow. These are impressive answers and I love it. But y'all might get a little bit upset with me this morning when I tell you it was Ellen Stebbins Waddle that said, self-love is the air beneath the wings of all our relationships. Eh, self-love is the air beneath. So I have a thing. I, I'm, what, I, I came through some things that I'm gonna share just a little bit with you real quick that caused me to learn that the most important relationship I can have as an entrepreneur, as an educator, as a, as, a, as a business leader, as a mindset disruptor and all the wonderful things I get to do in the world, and all the wonderful people I get to work with. I am a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, I've been a wife, and to some they call me mom. Is that relationship with myself? You see, friends, uh, a few years ago, I came up to a spot that was jaw dropping. And, and, and the question I want us to ponder on this morning is what would happen if we stop trying to control things as much as we do? You see, because these relationships that matter, a lot of times we find ourselves in a position expecting and requiring and waiting to receive and many times they fail we don't get what we want out of them so what if we let go of trying to control those and and work on really controlling and working on that wonderful relationship with ourselves? what would it look like you see a few years ago the university of california took a group of people that were depressed right and i want you to try something here's what they did they had them Smile and look up. And I want you to try this with me. I want you to smile <laughs> and I want you to look up. I want you to put the biggest smile on your face. I see you. Come on, man. I, I need your help here. 
smile and look up. And they had them practice that for 20 minutes. What this, the research found is that biochemically, it was difficult for the individuals in this process to pout. So can you smile and look up and pout? Let's do it again. I can't, I can't do that. I can only smile, I can't pout, and I can't really, and if you think about it, have you heard about the fake it till you make it term? Well, they were kind of faking it till they make it. You see, biochemically, it tricked the brain into developing a positive feeling within themselves. These individuals, remember I said, they brought a group of individuals that were depressed. They found that their depression levels lowered and many of them, most of them came off the medication. You see, my friend, a lot of times we're working to control relationships and outcomes that are completely out of our reach, forgetting that the key and most pivotal thing inside of any relationship as a leader, as a mother, as a daughter, as a wife, as a husband, is that relationship with herself. And so a few years ago, I started off in a process called, <laughs> have you ever heard about divorce? Yes, if you haven't gone through a divorce, you have met someone who has, or you've definitely heard a story. And while I was going through that divorce, I found myself so sad. We had been married for quite some time, and I see that the camera is recognizing my hands up. We were married for some time, and I, I remember just, just feeling so hopeless. I was confused about my identity because we were supposed to spend our lives together. Uh, some of us say the relationship with our family, right? But the way I was raised is that as a young woman, the crowning achievement is to gain a husband. And, 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 and some people will say, I don't really subscribe to that. But believe me, somewhere in the behind, in all cultures, we all want to find the love of our life. And you know, we're in Valentine's season, so allow me a little bit to fester on and that love. We want that Cupid to shoot that arrow and that person chooses us and we get to marry them and bring them home. But here I was in my mid thirties and don't you question how old I am. <laughs> it was a while ago. <laughs> I was going through divorce. I, we, we, had a, we went through a, a, a tremendous process of, of losing our, our unborn children and then a rocky good year and then boom, everything came to a screeching halt. I was sad, my, my, my body was, I didn't want to go on. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I, I didn't know if I should continue being, doing what I did or if I should move on. And, and these, this confusion I found was this loss of identity because I had become a wife and it became the most important thing in my life. So now that I was not a wife anymore, I didn't know who I was. And, and could you believe that? I mean, people who know me at the time would never believe how much turmoil I was in. I thought it might have been best if I just croaked and die. Yes, I, I thought about death. And so that is when I came up that the relationship within myself, with myself, had to be the most important one so that I don't ever find myself, and it's not about to find myself in a situation when I lose a job, when I lose anything or anyone, that I am completely lost. Yes, 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 I'm gonna be sad, I'm gonna be hurt, but I don't want to be lost. And so I found that there are five principles that I start to live by. And this is what I teach and I'm gonna run through them really briefly. But if we're saying the relationship with ourselves is the first one, the first principle, I want you to think about how do you love when you love someone? How do you love? You don't just forget about them, you spend time with them, right? So this is how I want you to think with these principles is how am I going to love myself? How am I going to develop and bond with who I am at the core? 
I call these five principles my bases. I've got to go back to my bases. You know, in the USA, we have a game called baseball, but all of you know cricket because cricket is a global, a little bit more global. Who knows about cricket? If you could just, just raise your hand or type yes in the chat. And so you have to bat the ball <laughs> and you got to get back to the wicket before someone gets the ball and taps that those those the wicket because you're not on base and they'll knock you out right so i said i need to have something to maintain the relationship with myself and i encourage you to try my basis the first one is belief systems my goodness i believe from the the, the good book the bible that i grew up reading that as a man or woman think it so he or she is. And so what do I think about myself are my belief systems. Those will determine how I speak and, and how I act and, and all the results I get because everything starts about how I think. So if I think that I am worthy, if I think that I bring value to every situation, if I am confident in my abilities and my skills and if i am thinking that i can as we say here yes i can then i will so what are your belief systems what do you truly value what are your core values and your beliefs listen i'm not talking about the one society told you remember i said that i i was told that the crowning achievement after everything i could achieve is to become a wife and then i lost it and, and I was in confusion. So what are your core values and beliefs? What is your belief system? Then the second principle inside of my basis system is, oh my goodness, yeah. here we go. My second is authenticity. You can't achieve anything without knowing exactly who and what you are. Authenticity will connect you to who you are, your purpose, and that is how you will show up. The third one is self-love. You're going to have to love on yourself, spend time with yourself, take care of your body, take care of your soul, take care of your mind, take care of your spirit. And yes, in there becomes that relationship that my friend Ambassador Mamet spoke about, the relationship with God, relationship with her friends, the relationship with her family. And then the, the, the fourth one is energy. Whoever lets their battery run out on their cell phone, not very many of us. <laughs> so you're going to need energy. You're going to need energy. And with that, you're going to create habits that help you get energy. Like Professor Queen says, she said, we all need rest. It's important. Health is wealth. So keep plugged into the source of energy by exercising, eating healthy, you know, creating healthy boundaries. Keep your energy supply on ch full charge at all times. You know, biochemically, they said that motion comes, helps with those emotions. And those emotions need to be regulated so you can have a re uh, proper energy. And my last principle is self-awareness. You're going to need self-awareness in order to achieve success. You're going to have to know yourself and you're going to have to grow yourself in order to achieve success. These are my five principles for developing and maintaining the most important relationship you will ever have in your lifetime. And that is the relationship with yourself. I'm Dr. Lisa White, your number one mindset disruptor. And I encourage you today, when you think about being down and being uh, sad, just smile and look up. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Please love, light, and blessings. I'll, see, I'll be here enjoying the rest of this. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. It's so wonderful because we've been waiting since January and now we've made it. Or even since December. <laughs> because you were meant to be one of our guests of honor in December. But we still yes. thank God. We still want to appreciate your time for sharing with us this morning about self-love, how we can really, really focus on that and how we can love ourselves and what our belief system 
we have to really look into it and you know for us to be able to you know self-care ourselves and also once we do that then we'll be able to love other people so i want to say thank you so much i like the way you said something about energy yes habit is to gain energy and i believe that when we have the right attitude right habit then we can fuel our energy am i right dr alisa <laughs> Thank you, you got it, sister. You Thank got you it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I will be glad to have you still around. I know that uh, you might be trying to go back to bed, or even if you can stay around for a couple of minutes. Yes, or I will be here for a little bit. Uh, so that we can learn together. 